Almost 3.7 billion miles away from the Sun, there exists a small, dark world that was once the ninth planet of the solar system. Today, Pluto is officially just a trans-Neptunian object. Shortly after the planet was downgraded, NASA's New Horizons probe reached this hitherto almost unknown world. The measurement data surprised everyone, and for the first time, NASA was able to publish real images of Pluto. We're now excited to embark on a journey to one of the most unusual celestial bodies in the solar system, together with you. Pluto, World in Darkness Imagine yourselves disembarking as Pluto pioneers from a spaceship, setting foot for the first time on a mysterious dark world. In the vastness, the sun shines as a small, dim ball. The strange and cold world you now find yourselves in is covered by a large shadow. In the semi-darkness, you explore the strangely fragile and porous rock. This world is quiet, very quiet indeed. Due to the low gravity, moving around is difficult. The gravity, only 0.063 times that of Earth, makes you bounce around like light feathers. You have trouble moving forward on the planet. Your shoes have been fitted with weights and spikes so that you can maintain a foothold on the planet. With great effort and difficulty, you are able to bend down to take a rock sample. Then, you climb back into your space capsule to land at another location on the dwarf planet and take more samples. You've trained hard for years for this mission. You were prepared for the unusual situation, the low gravity, and the icy surface of the planet. Pluto is bizarre, dark, yet beautiful. It's a sublime moment to stand on this small and icy cold world so far away from the sun. After a few hours, the mission is over. The negative 351 degrees Fahrenheit surface temperature only allows for short stays. You take a few more photos of the sun and then you start your journey home. This is more or less what it would be like for people landing on Pluto for the first time. In the semi-darkness of the outer regions of the solar system, this celestial body is hardly illuminated during the day. The sun is a small, weak yellow ball in the far distance. For a long time, researchers thought that Pluto, being so far out, must be a dead and boring kingdom of rock and ice, and then they experienced a surprise. Pluto, at a distance of about 40 astronomical units, is the closest of the so-called trans-Neptunian bodies. Since its discovery in 1930, Pluto was the ninth planet, but in 2006, it was downgraded to a dwarf planet. It shares this title with a whole host of newly discovered planets that orbit our star at the very outer edge of the solar system in almost complete darkness. The fact that Pluto has left the ranks of the official planets was received with regret by many people. Although little was known about Pluto, people had been accustomed since 1930 to the fact that there were nine major planets. For a long time, no one suspected that many more dwarf planets would be found in the Kuiper Belt. Eris and Sedna are just a bit smaller than Pluto, and scientists were faced with the choice of classifying these two and many more newly discovered objects as planets or drawing a line. Since Pluto is much more similar to the trans-Neptunian dwarf planets than its neighbors Uranus and Neptune, the scientists decided to strip Pluto of its planet status. Since then, it has officially been called, simply, TNO-134-340. From Darkness into Light It seems almost ironic that shortly after its demotion, Pluto showed how fascinating and unique it really is. Pluto is extremely difficult to observe, and even in images from the Hubble Space Telescope, the dwarf planet looked like a hazy brown disk without any surface details. Since it was impossible to adequately explore Pluto with telescopes and from afar, NASA sent the unmanned New Horizons probe to Pluto in the very year of its demotion. It took the probe a whole nine years and eight months to reach its distant target. When it finally reached its primary target in 2015, New Horizons immediately got to work and surprised not just the scientists. In a very short time, the probe collected six gigabytes of information and it took more than a year to transmit this large amount of data to Earth. To this day, planetary researchers are still analyzing the data. Until this point, no human had ever really seen Pluto's surface. And suddenly, a colorful and apparently very active world was revealed to the curious scientists. 
The images of the strangely varied structured surface of the planet revealed an unexpected geological activity. Although New Horizons was not able to penetrate to the core of the planet, the measuring devices nevertheless delivered data that for the first time allowed conclusions to be drawn about the structure of the planet. According to the resulting model, Pluto has a solid core about 1,056 miles thick, made up of a mixture of various substances and elements. The upper layers consist of water ice and rock. The ice of the crust is in places probably up to 186 miles thick. It's quite possible that Pluto carries liquid water under this ice layer. Active geothermal structures and ice volcanism show that Pluto's core processes heat. According to some assumptions, Pluto's core could generate enough heat to melt a portion of the icy mantle. In this case, a very salty and poisonous ocean containing large amounts of dissolved ammonia could be hidden deep beneath the surface of the dwarf planet. Quite unlike on Earth, the geological processes on Pluto rely less on water, ice, and rock. Rather, this planet mobilizes masses of crystallized gases like nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Planet with a Heart, the Tombaugh Regio Our journey across the surface of Pluto begins with the most striking and best studied area, the Tombaugh Regio. This vast region in the equatorial zone of the planetoid resembles a heart and is unofficially also called the Pluto Heart. At a size of about 1,429 miles, the area takes up about a quarter of the entire surface of the celestial body. The heart is divided into a bright left side and a darker side. The left section forms a landscape called Sputnik Planitia, or Sputnik Planum. Sputnik Planitia has a diameter of 927 miles, and the topographic map shows that it's an extensive lowland area with a thick layer of nitrogen ice, carbon monoxide, and solid methane. These substances have a bright coloration, which makes some parts of the plain reflect up to 90% of the incoming light. There are virtually no craters, indicating that the region is geologically very young. Sputnik Planitia probably formed about 100 million years ago when Pluto collided with a large celestial body. The impact left a huge crater, which was later filled with substances from the warm interior of the dwarf planet. This created a unique cell or honeycomb-like structure, which is unusually lively. A comparison with observational data from the new James Webb Space Telescope has shown that the structures have significantly migrated in the last eight years. This is an indication of the ongoing geological activity. Tombo Reggio is bordered by relatively high mountain ranges. The mountains of Hilary Montes, to the west of Sputnik Planitia, may not be among the largest in the solar system, yet they are comparatively large, with heights of up to about 1.86 miles. The towns in Montes are located in the southern part of the heart. Some of them rise over 3.72 miles above the average surface level of the dwarf planet, forming the highest mountain range on Pluto. Remarkably, these rocks are likely primarily composed of water ice. At the low temperatures on Pluto, water ice is as solid as rock. Cryovolcanism on Pluto Further south, a deep depression shapes Pluto's exterior. Surrounded by massive, stratified ice ridges and rocks, the structures show clear evidence of cryovolcanism. The surrounding rocks are very likely solidified ejecta from old eruptions. Thanks to the new color images, researchers were able to learn details about the chemical composition of the eruptions for the first time, and thus also find out how Pluto is structured internally. The eastern part of Tombaugh Regio is darker. The landscape here is much older. The craters are probably billions of years old and were created by asteroid or comet impacts. Unlike Sputnik Planitia, this region shows no signs of active geological processes. If we continue traveling east along the equator, we encounter a chain of dark spots called maculas. The landscape here is intersected by high mountain ranges that stretch for several hundred miles. How the maculas were formed is a mystery that scientists are currently still researching. It's suspected that their dark color comes from a combination of impact craters and tholins. Tholins are complex organic compounds formed by the action of high-energy radiation on simple molecules in the atmosphere of celestial bodies, influencing their optical properties. Lowell Regio 
We leave the rugged world of the Maculas behind us and head further north. There lies Lowell Reggio, the expansive valley that surrounds Pluto's North Pole. Because Pluto's axis of rotation has a significant tilt to the plane of its orbit, this region is the brightest on the planet. Pluto always moves with its North Pole facing the Sun. It is suspected that this is why the density of Pluto's atmosphere has tripled over the past 30 years, despite the increasing distance from the Sun. It's likely that the Sun's rays cause nitrogen ice to evaporate, which then settles at the pole and enters the dwarf planet's atmosphere. Charon The strange movements of Pluto have a good reason. The particularly inclined orbit with cyclic oscillations around a focal point is caused by the moon Charon. Pluto's moon Charon is comparatively large with a diameter of about 753 miles. Pluto itself has a diameter of about 1,476 miles. The two orbit each other at an average distance of about 12,172 miles. Both celestial bodies resemble a binary system more than a planet and a moon, although Pluto clearly leads the pair. The cosmic dance of the two was first documented by New Horizons and is currently also part of intensive exploration. Charon is not only very large for a moon, it also resembles Pluto in many ways. However, its surface is even darker. Nevertheless, images from New Horizons showed evidence of water ice mixed with methane and nitrogen and unusual geological activities. Experts suspect that the Kuiper Belt will continue to offer potential for new discoveries for decades to come. So far, only a tiny part of this region of our solar system is known. Tell us what you think about Pluto and the images from NASA. Do you have an idea what beautiful, incredible, or shocking discoveries might still await us in the Kuiper Belt?